Thank you so, so much, Mr. Chairman. I, I am uh, so happy to have a chance to join the committee this year and look forward to, to working with you and all of, uh, of my colleagues. Um, Mr. Greenblatt, I, I wanted to start by taking you back to something you said about the, the, the people who, who, who were part of that mob that attacked the Capitol on January 6th. And you said, I think quite rightly, that um, uh, under normal circumstances, we would have recognized them as just ordinary Americans um, who were absolutely convinced in that moment that what they were doing, this deviant thing that they were doing was something completely normal. And they were also probably convinced that most Americans were completely on their side, agreed with them. Um, and you mentioned that one reason for this, and this is, I think, the, the core problem we face, is that, that they were radicalized to these beliefs on, on social media. They came to, to, to believe that what they were doing was normal and everyone supported them. Um, and my, my, my first question to you is how, how did that happen? Did they just wake up one morning, these school teachers and real estate agents and fitness instructors, and decide they were going to search on the internet for neo-Nazi beliefs or white supremacy, or did something recommend it to them? So, <clears throat> Congressman, oops, am I mute? No, I'm not mute. Congressman Adowski, thank you for your question. And again, as someone who I know throughout your career, you've looked at human rights issues around the world. I think what you probably saw happen on January the 6th bore resemblance to coups and other insurrections you've seen in developing countries across the planet. It did, yes. So I want to say one thing that builds upon my earlier answer. We need to recognize that those the reason why tens of millions of ordinary Americans came to the National Mall is because first, I will just say, they were rallied to do so by mainstream politicians. They were encouraged to show up by mainstream pundits on cable news shows. So we do need to acknowledge that there is a broad responsibility for what happened. And again, the politicians who were standing there on the mall, encouraging them with it, waving their fist to go take Congress, they were only from one. I mean, it's not a political statement. To, it's an observation of fact. They were only from one party. So let's say that, number one. Number two, indeed, why do people believe this kind of insanity and this lunacy that there are pedophilia, you know, sat Satan worshiping Democrats, you know, in the basements of police parlors, eating children, for God's sakes, in part it is because the algorithms that animate these social media platforms uh, invisibly to the user route information to them. So once you certain click on a certain kind of story, it is often reinforced. And you, any of us can see this today if we have a normal internet browser like Chrome or Firefox or whatnot or Edge, and you look at a YouTube video, it will start to send you more videos, the kinds of which you just looked at. And yeah. so that algorithmic routing that it happens to, un, to the user unknown shapes their worldview and creates what Eli Pariser calls filter bubbles. And they're deeply dangerous when they are telling people that, again, you have this conspiracy trying right. to hurt them. So just a, one, one example of that, you know, Facebook in 2018, the, the, they did an internal study in which they determined that 64% of all joins, people joining an extremist group uh, uh, on their platform was due to their recommendation tools, that it was recommended to them to do that by Facebook. And, and the reason for that is that, that these, these algorithms um, uh, uh, are engagement-based, right? In other words, they, they are designed to maximize the time that everybody spends glued to the screen, and they figured out that what does that to us is content that reinforces our most passionate, intense beliefs, our fears and our hates. Isn't that correct? It is absolutely correct. And their business models are based on engagement and clicks. And as they used to say for local news, if it bleeds, it leads, right? And so, again, if, if, it, if it's a conspiracy, it drives clicks. And it is deep. We see that these things don't happen in a vacuum. Online hate and conspiracy theories can metastasize into real-world violence. We saw that on January the 6th. And so you, you'd mentioned the legislation that I introduced with Congress, yes. which is a narrow, narrow effort to deny these companies immunity under Section 230. If that kind of content, which they promote through these algorithms, contributes to real world violence. Um, and I would say to all my colleagues, we, we can believe that the biggest problem is on the right, on the far right or on the far left. It, it doesn't matter. We can debate that. But which, whichever of those things you believe, you should be for this. 
because the mechanism works the same way. It pushes people on the left further left. It pushes people on the right further right until they reach an extreme that, as you rightly said, is totally out of the mainstream. Thank you so much. I yield back.